Okay, so today I will have a look at Hi-Fi Berry OS, which is another audio file network player software solution for Raspberry Pi. I already have tried this OS quite a long time ago when it was in a beta stage. So let's see what kind of impressions we will get from this audio file software solution for your Raspberry Pi today. First, let me say this review and all impressions are based on a version of this OS marked as 202.10531. I structured this review in chapters so you can skip between them based on your liking and your interest. But I suggest you to watch all. As always, I will be showing and explain some details I found out about this OS you don't want to miss and might be important to you. Plus, I have a small bonus for you today with this particle player in a form of a short tutorial how to make this player a Tidal Connect device. So, we will have a look at installation time and difficulty, hardware support, music sources and the ways of use, UI design, features, sound, community support, and at the end I will do some conclusion about this player. When it comes to installation, the first installation steps are pretty much the same as with the other players out there. You need to download the image of the system and write it via Rufus or, for example, Balena Etcher to your SD card. Insert your SD card into your Raspberry Pi and boot up. Well, I have to say the first boot up is quite slow and you can find even a mentioning about it in documentation of this OS on HiFiBerry's website. Basically, the difference here is the system after the boot up checks and tries to recognize your hardware and automatically configures it. Which brings me to the hardware support. This software was developed for people who buy high fibrous products as digital transport, DAC, the DSP card, and other. So what is important to know, and can be a bummer for the others, is that you need to have some of high fibrous boards to make the output work with this OS. Still, if you don't have any high fiber board, this review might be a good look and overview for you to know where this OS is standing and what it can offer. And as who knows, the support for the other hardware out there might one day open up officially or it will come up from the community in a form of some hacks. And to be honest, what first crossed my mind was this player is, as all of them, Linux based with also mixer underneath taking care of the output. USB DACs should be supported, so I tried to connect my old SMSL DAC via USB to see if it will be at least detected and recognized. And as you can see, it was successfully detected, so there might be a way around this hardware restriction and make at least the USB output work if someone will be interested so much about this OS. Anyways, by default, the USB DAC didn't work. So I tested further this OS with hi Digi DigiPlus Transformer version using the coaxial output and Raspberry Pi phone. So when you first boot up, you will see a welcome screen guiding you through a couple of more final steps of the installation. You can change the name of the player, privacy options, so no statistics are going to be sent, and if music an artist metadata can be downloaded. After that, you will see a very slim, clean looking interface with a main menu, which doubles on the top as a top bar remaining there as you go further through the menu. Music sources. Unfortunately, there is no native support for Tidal or Obus or other streaming platforms. When it comes to other music sources and the ways how you can use this player, Hi-Fi OS offers Bluetooth, AirPlay, then DLNA, which works with all the UPnP clients I tried, OK. But unfortunately, I found out the cover artworks don't work at all. And when you have the internet metadata download in the settings of the system on, it didn't recognize the tracks properly and showed incorrect cover art most of the time. Then there is another source listed a service called OpenHome, which is basically DLNA slash UPnP renderer, which works. And your UPnP client as a bubble UPnP will find it, but again the cover art doesn't show, and the icon on the interface was showing me that I'm playing a radio instead. Then as another source, there are online radios. The ones I tried worked perfectly fine. 
Besides that, you can use this player as a rune endpoint or as a Spotify Connect device. Squeeze Light is here included as well. And then Snapcast, which is a multi room player client. Besides that, I should mention Last FM as a service is supported if you wish to use it. Now, when it comes to local media streaming, this player allows you to play locally stored music, so you can attach your hard drive via USB or you can connect to your NAS drive. But it doesn't allow you to copy and store your music on the free space of your SD card, unfortunately. Samba is not active and not possible to set up, at least from the interface, I mean. So I touched my hard drive with my 80 gigs of music via USB to see how it will work and how it will index my music. And unfortunately, I found out that the indexing was taking ages and ages. And after hours, still almost nothing was showing up in my library. I believe that was because my hard drive doesn't include music only. And this player and its interface unfortunately doesn't allow you to point out the source of your library to a specific folder. So I copied a couple of sample albums from my library on a USB pen drive and tried again. First the indexing finished fine, but I noticed some strange things. First some metadata like a picture of an artist were downloaded, some were not. And then some albums were not even indexed at all. Some were listed twice. And then when I sometimes click on a particular album, it showed another album's content instead. Later on, I found out that the interface got confused. For example, if you have an uh, unsupported file in a folder with other supported files, it gets confused. It shows the album cover, but you can't open it or play. So my advice, all your folders have to be very well organized with only supported files in it. Then it will work without issues. Nothing like that happened with the other players I tested so far, as I'm using the same files and library, so I shared the real experience. Also important to note, this player doesn't support DSD files. WAV files, if you have some, are also not supported. There is no official list of supported files, so I could list it here for you, unfortunately. I tested HRS flag files, and they worked fine. And then there is one more thing this player can do and can be useful for, and that's the bonus info I mentioned at the beginning I have for you. This player can be also used as a Tidal Connect device, which I tried and worked for me well. If you are interested how to make this player Tidal Connect device, I have a short tutorial at the end of this video for you. Design. Overall, I was looking forward to this player mainly because of how slim it is and because of the looks, as I like clean, flat interfaces. It offers dark and light theme, and I like what they try to achieve here with the design. Hi-Fi Berry teamed up with Bank and Olufsen, which actually developed this player. You can see the design language is very similar even to Bank and Olufsen website. So overall, the minimalistic design approach is very nice. But for example, on mobile device, it might look too minimalistic for some. As even if you play locally stored files on a mobile device, the cover art in playing now mode doesn't show, which I personally would like to see. Another thing is, as overall, the UI menu is structured as the intuitiveness of it. Most menu items are placed fine, but some small main things, like for example, to reboot or shut down the system, you have to go to general section of the menu to find it there instead of naturally being in the main menu and then other small things. Features. Besides all I mentioned, Hi Fiber OS has also channel adjustments if you will need it and some extra DSP and a room compensation feature if you would like to play with that. These features are supported with Hi Fiber's DSP cards only. Sound. Overall, the sound quality capabilities, besides that you can't play the SD files, were on the same level as with the other players I tested when it comes to all the sources. I didn't found this player to sound worse or better. Support and community. I have checked High Fireberries forum dedicated to this OS. It doesn't look so crowded as, for example, Volumio's forum is and some of the forum threads there are just with one reply or two, but I noticed the team replies very quickly sometimes within just minutes, so that I liked. 
Conclusion Well, I think I understand there was both an uh, enthusiastic thought and a business purpose behind the development of this OS. But at the end, what matters is that this is still a free software designed and developed to support high fiberous products, I mean customers. And what it brings to them, to us, and what value and functionality from everyday use perspective it offers. So I have to say from that regards, I believe it still needs some tweaks there and there. You still can read below quite a lot of menu items of this system that those are experimental features, even for example below DLNA as a music source. From my perspective of use, it was mainly the metadata, the cover arts not showing, library indexing not forgiving, but there are ways how to manually fix those and work around it. So you can enjoy the beautiful minimalistic design of this player I'm a big fan of, but for some it might be too much. So it's up to you your needs and the ways how you would use this player. If the development continues the right way, this player could be perfected indeed and then maybe become an ultimate choice for current high fibers customers out there and a big plus for those considering their hardware in the future. But in my opinion, it's not there yet. I'm looking forward to watch future releases of this OS and bring you my further impressions, so stay tuned. Now finally, if you are interested to make this player a Tidal Connect device, here is the promised tutorial. First I want to say all the thanks for this goes to a developer called Tony Trump, which made this happen. So first you will need to access your Raspberry Pi with hi Fiberry OS running via SSH. There are options how to do that, but I will be using a program called PuTTY and it's free and a reliable program, so you can download it yourself or use some other alternatives based on your operating system. For the access, you will need to know your Raspberry Pi IP address. After you open PuTTY, you put your IP address into the host name field and click open. Confirm yes, that you trust this host device. And now put your login details. If you didn't change the password, is HiFiBerry and the login root in this case. Now the first command you put in is as follows. I will put all the commands in the description of this video so you can just copy and paste them. Next we will need to unzip the pre-built docker image. So it's unzip, now the name of the actual file, which is title connect docker dot zip and enter. Then we need to move to that unzipped folder to run the docker image. So the path is again title connect docker master slash docker next command is docker compose up d and that's basically it to stop the title connect for that there is a command docker compose down and if you want to run the docker daemon without using docker compose here are the commands for that you will need to use and now you are ready to use your raspberry pi as a title connect with this high fiberry OS. Thanks again to this developer called Tony Trump, which also has in a progress stage a dedicated extension plugin, which will add Tidal Connect into the menu along with the other sources. I think this will be added officially in the future release of this OS. One thing to point out, the Tidal Connect worked for me really well, but the software volume control didn't work so far, also the cover hours didn't show. So that was my look and my opinion about this audio player software solution for Raspberry Pi. More is coming, so subscribe, like, and thank you for watching.